Welcome to you all and uh, welcome to a new program about science, creation and the Bible, hosted by Alpha Omega TV. Our guest today is Mr. John Mackay, geologist, International Director of Creation Research Australia. A very warm welcome, Mr. Mackay, today. Good day again, Romulan. Good to be with you. Ever since I started to read my Bible, when I came across Goliath, I know, okay, David was small, but I am small too kind of like David that big. But Goliath was bigger than David. Okay? That means Goliath would be, was bigger than myself, than yourself. Uh, can we call Goliath a giant? And if we can call Goliath a giant, what is? Please explain us, talk to us about what gi who giants are. Well, definitely the word giant has been used for, da for uh, Goliath. And of course, that's the whole point of the story, that little David could slay a huge giant. Mm -hmm and uh, not through his own strength. The Bible says that David said, God gave me the wisdom mm, yes. and the stones yes. and, uh, yeah. and the, uh, the sling, etc. and mm. I slew the giant with God's strength. But it's interesting, being a geologist, you actually dig up a lot of giants, which mm. throws a bit of a light on, on the whole subject of mm. giants. So, do you remember the uh, fossil shark tooth I showed you the oh, other day? Oh, yes. Nice yeah, I hope it's, it's not going to turn into some kind of nightmare. No, well, we're <laughs> going to talk about Jurassic Shark mm. today instead of Jurassic Park. You can see how big that is. Oh, yes, I can. Now, we know exactly what sort of shark that came from mm -hmm. for one simple reason. I live in Australia. Mm -hmm. Australia is the world's biggest island or smallest continent. Take your pick. And when the British first went there, they didn't need to worry about convicts escaping because <laughs> there was nowhere to go. Good guards. Right? Yeah, good guards. <laughs> and sharks make, you know, free, uh, free guards. <laughs> um, so the convicts didn't want to swim away to anywhere. The waters are, are full of sharks. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gets a bit of news every now and then when, you know, a, a, a surfer gets eaten by a shark or mm -hmm. something like that. But we know what sort of shark that that fossil tooth came from because the same variety of shark lives in Australia today, except it's got teeth this big. Now, same shape, same proportions. Mm -hmm. um, the shark today is a, what we call a great white pointer. Mm -hmm. So it can be sort of four or five meters long, which mm -hmm. is impressive enough, and it opens its mouth, and there's hundreds of these little razor sharp teeth, mm -hmm. exactly the same sort of teeth as that. Mm -hmm. So if we have a great white pointer today, that fellow was a greater white pointer and he could re reach up to 15 meters, 16 meters, 17 meters long, a huge shark. Mm. Which does raise a good question. Why do we have little ones today? And why do we have little people like Romulus Kampart? Although compared to a pygmy, you're almost a giant. If I was to take you to Africa and stand you alongside some of the little people there, you would appear to be huge. But compared to Goliath mentioned in the Bible, who was over three meters tall, around about three meters tall, he was a big man compared mm. to us. Mm. Now, the interesting thing is if you come to Australia, you hire your surfboard, you go out for a swim, and you see a shark. Well, very quickly before it eats you, measure how long it is. And then make sure the measurements are sent back to your friends because they will come out next year and measure the same shark. And they will discover something very interesting. Unlike you, unlike me, Unlike your dog, unlike your cat, sharks never stop growing. Mm. Now, put that in your mind as a fact that's easy to prove. In fact, there's an interesting verse in the Bible you talked about to start with. You might want to read it for us before we go any further, because we're dealing with facts and we're dealing with evidence, we're dealing Rich. with science and we're dealing with faith. And the interesting thing is that so-called religious book you've got there, the Bible, it's got some interesting statements about proving things. So go to the New Testament, have a look at 1 Thessalonians, okay. which was written by the Apostle Paul, yes. who uh, our viewers might know was a, a university academic. Yes. You know, had degrees in history, degrees in religion, degrees in law, spoke the Greek, Greek language. Hebrew, Greek, yeah, yes, yeah, so yeah. Latin. Yes. Yeah. And uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, yes, and have a look at verse 21 and read it to us. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. 
Okay, so do you notice what it said about this so-called religion? You are to prove things, uh -huh. test things, mm -hmm. and only keep the things which turn out to be good. So Christianity, unlike the, the rest of the religions of the world, is not a blind faith. Mm -hmm. Atheism is a blind yes. faith. You know, there's nothing there to believe in, so there's no evidence that there's nothing there, so you just believe it blindly. Whereas the Bible says, look, you have to prove things and only keep the things that turn out to be good and true. So question, Mr. Romulus. Yes, sir. A giant shark in the rocks, the same sort of shark today, but yet it's smaller. I wonder what we've just discovered. And the reason I ask the question is this. I watched a television program. You've heard of the American Discovery Channel? Yes, I did. They make all sorts of documentaries about nature. <clears throat> the pictures are great. The storylines are totally wrong, mm. usually. I mean, here's the storyline that came over on this program. They showed that sort of a fossil shark's tooth, right? Mm -hmm. And there are thousands of these found in the rocks. Then they showed a present day shark from Australia. Great white pointer, greater white pointer. And then they said sharks used to be monsters, now they're midgets, look how much they've evolved. Now can you see anything wrong with that? If I see my plant in the garden mm -hmm. becoming from small to big, it's, I will say it progressed. Mm -hmm. But if I see the other way, I mean, I'm having something big and get small, I'll say, wow, how great it degenerated. That's the most I can, I can tell about it. Okay, so therefore you used to have big sharks, giant sharks. Yes. And now we've got tiny sharks, yes. and they called it evolution, but it isn't. No, you see, the shark has turned into a shark, mm -hmm. but the funny thing is, it's gotten smaller. Mm. So evolution is the wrong word completely. Yes. Yes, exactly. And the Bible does talk about giants. In fact, way back in the beginning, if you read as Genesis chapter 6, mm -hmm. you'll find there's a reference to giants uh, during the days of Noah. Mm. Way back in the beginning of your Bible there, you'll find Genesis chapter 6 is all about the introduction to that well-known story on Noah's flood. Okay. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Now, we don't have many giant mm. human beings today, Not do exactly. we? exactly. You see some of them in the James Bond movies, right? Yeah. The big people. Oh, yes. And uh, most of us are about your size, yep. right? And there's a few which we call pygmies that yes. live in the jungles of Africa. We don't have any giant sharks left. No. We have a lot of tiny ones, and we have some middle-sized ones. Yeah. I mean, a five-meter-long Great Australian White Pointer is big enough for yeah. me. But what's going on? You see, I said you can take your tape measure and measure the shark, and it grows every day of its life as long as it lives. Mm -hmm. Question. If it used to be bigger, what does that tell you about how long it lived? Very good point. Uh, it means as the bigger it is, the older it might prove to be. Okay, now uh -huh. let's, let's put that into a biblical perspective. Mm -hmm. Because you see, the opposite perspective is the one of evolution, which says that molecules that didn't have any lifespan, okay. that didn't live and didn't die, somehow became living creatures like single-celled amoebas. They lived for maybe two weeks, and then they turned into worms that lived for two months, and they finally turned into fishes that lived for two years, who turned into people who lived for, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, mm -hmm. 70 years. And if we find out how to make the cells do it, we might be able to make people live for 300 or 400 years. And they call it evolution. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible says, sorry, it's the opposite. Read us the last verse of Genesis chapter 5, because this is just before the story of Noah's flood. Okay. Uh, Genesis chapter 5, right before the verse we just read. Um, 32nd verse, and Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, be honest, Mr. Romulus, yes. how old are you? Do I have to say, yeah, 41. <laughs> <laughs> 41, sir. Now, how old did that verse say Noah was? 